Hello, Paul. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing really well. <laughs> cool. Can you start by introducing yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Paul Sulelis. Um, I run a project called Library of the Printed Web, and I publish through that. And it's also a physical archive, a collection of artists' books and zines. I think I have over 200 works. Uh, yeah, that's that's um, the project I run, um, Library of the Printed Web. And but I'm also myself an artist, a graphic designer, and I teach graphic design. Okay, and. Uh... When did you start in making uh, um, the library of the printed web? Uh, it's been pretty recent, um, which is hard to believe because a lot has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in 2013 because I was making some work that had to do with the internet, with the network, but in the printed page. And I had just joined um, ABC, Artist Books Cooperative, mm -hmm. and a lot of the artists in there were also doing this kind of work where they were working with the network, the internet, the web, but for the printed page. And I was really interested in this, um, this translation mm -hmm. from one platform, from one um, state or, or medium into the other. So I started just gathering this work together. Um, I was asked to show my work at a conference and I decided to actually show the work of other artists as well that were doing this kind of work. And I gathered, next thing I knew I had like 50 things <laughs> and most of them were friends. And I said, oh, I should call this something. So mm -hmm. I said, let me just call it a library, a library of the printed web. And the reaction was so good. Um, and, and the collection itself was so interesting, so, so much more interesting than just my own work by itself. So I decided this, this has a life. Let me keep adding to it. Let me keep this alive. I made a Tumblr for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was just three years ago, but, mm -hmm. um, but a lot has happened. I've started publishing through the project. I've been teaching around it, giving lectures, giving talks, workshops. Okay. It's, it's been really great. Um, can, can you tell us about the archive? Where is it? Uh, what do you have in the archive? Well, the archive is a little spread out right now. A little bit is at school. I mm -hmm. teach at um, RISD and some of it is, is at home. When I, when I started it, I actually had somebody build a beautiful wooden mm -hmm. case, a crate. It really looked like a crate, but it had wheels and a door. I put everything inside and it was jammed. So now, <laughs> now it's yeah. too big for this crate. But uh, that first conference that I showed it at, it was at the CUNY Graduate Center. So I was um, pushing this thing up Fifth Avenue with all the, <laughs> the collection inside. Um, anyway, I don't use that anymore. It's, it's a little spread out. Um, yeah. And what are they? It, it's the, uh, um, great web-based uh, publication. Yeah. So artists like Joachim Schmidt, Mishka Henner, Stephanie Sajuko, Angela Janusa, um, there are so many. And these are artists who have decided to make that translation from the web page or the screen into mm -hmm. the printed page. And a lot of it is print on demand. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting about these works is you think, okay, I see the browser on the page. This came from the web in some way. Um, how is my experience of this material different? You mm -hmm. know, is it slower? I'm touching it, I'm feeling it. It's together here in a book, I can save it, mm -hmm. I can hold it. All of that, yeah, I think all of that is kind of obvious, kind of in an interesting way. But it's also doing something else. The, the internet is um, changing so much, things are disappearing. I mean, we know that conservation on the internet is a really big problem, especially for artists. So when you print this stuff out, you're kind of pausing it in a way, mm -hmm. you're putting a hold and saying, okay, this right here is an artifact. So I like this idea of the artifact and the archive, mm -hmm. um, which means we have to take care of mm -hmm. these materials. I don't do such a good job of that. So <laughs> I've just started thinking about how to take the whole collection and put it in an institution, maybe. Is it because it's uh, over or how no, do I wanted to, to continue to... I wanted to continue and I want to keep adding to it, but I've had, I, I haven't announced it yet, but I have had an offer from a major institution to say, let's take this whole thing and put it here. We'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. This is really exciting to me because that means the project um, has the potential to be larger than mm -hmm. me and mm -hmm. some books in the corner of my apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so I, you know, I show the collection a lot. Um, 
but I have to stuff it in a suitcase, you know, and carry it around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, that's just, you know, I can't sustain that. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us a bit more about the publications? So some of them are print on demand, some mm -hmm. of them are actual editions, like... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some of them are unique one-off objects. I have this one um, incredible thing. Uh, it's just called Mona Lisa's. And it's by, he was a student at the time, Fraser Clark in Scotland. And it's this handmade, hand-bound, beautifully uh, bound, um, book object in a slipcase of hundreds of Mona Lisas from mm -hmm. um, a Google image search. And they're, but they're um, on the page like this, all of them, hundreds of them. And the way he's, he's put them on the page, they face out and create a sort of generic Mona Lisa mm -hmm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a unique object. You mm -hmm. know, I can't, I can't get that again. I think he only made a couple of them. So that's sort of on one extreme. On the other, or maybe there are three sort of types of publications. There's that, the unique object. Then there are um, uh, things that are being published like by Aperture or Jean Boit edition, mm -hmm. editions, you know, um, established well-known publishers who are interested in this kind of work, who are publishing the work of someone like um, Kenneth Goldsmith or uh, Doug Ricard, um, uh, John, uh, John Raffman. But then the third part is what I'm really interested in, which are um, artists who have decided to take this on themselves mm -hmm. and publish and um, print, frequently print on demand and take control of this whole process mm -hmm. of making, designing, uh, distribution. Um, and I have, I, I would say maybe 80% of the collection mm -hmm. is that kind of work. And the one that you publish as the yes. library of the printed web uh, yeah. uh, belong in, in this uh, yes, exactly. last category. So I and others uh, talk about this as uh, publishing as artistic practice, mm -hmm. you know? So it's somebody who has their publishing as a kind of practice, usually just one person or a very small team. And uh, the printed web is my um, artists publication where I take some of these artists and ask them to contribute. Mm -hmm. And so I think of each edition, each issue is kind of like a group show, mm -hmm. like a little exhibition. And there are also solo shows. Uh, yes. Some, some of them some are. Some of the zines, mm -hmm. yes, are solo shows. So I have the printed web and so I have four issues um, and it changes each time, always print on demand. Mm -hmm. And then I have printed web editions where I ask one artist uh, to take 72 pages and fill it with one work. Mm -hmm. And I use uh, the cheapest, absolutely most poorly printed <laughs> uh, zine format, <laughs> print on demand format uh, that I can find. They are super cheap to print. I sell them cheaply. So this is important to me. It makes mm -hmm. the work accessible. Mm -hmm. It can circulate easily. Um, and it also somehow feels more digital that way. I mean, I consider the whole project to be a kind of digital publishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Uh... Okay. And so how do you link uh, or do you create uh, links between this and your um, teaching job and your uh, design experience? Yeah, that's pretty new for me because um, I was graphic designer with my own practice for 15 years. Okay. I had never taught. I didn't have an artist practice. I'd never published. So it's only in the last five years that these things have started to um, develop in my practice and how to balance them has been the trick, you know, I'm still working on that. But I think of my own practice as having these four parts, teaching, mm -hmm. client work, I still do, um, writing and research. I'm a writer and a curator for Rhizome, mm -hmm. contributing editor, uh, and my own publishing projects. So these four things, and so they, so you asked, how do you make the link? Sometimes it's explicit, you know, sometimes um, I'm teaching experimental publishing studio at RISD mm -hmm. and I'm talking with my students about something. I'm showing them the work. They're making some kind of variation mm -hmm. on that work. It's informing our understanding of what that is. And then it goes right back into how I write about it or what I'm mm -hmm. researching. And then, it, and then it feeds back in this this kind of loop. I really love mm -hmm. this is this is why I'm teaching. And so why, why is it important to print, to print uh, internet? Uh, um, why? Is, is, yeah, is it 
because it's always changing? Are there marks of what happened on, on the internet? And well, it's interesting. This, I've only noticed recently that I said, you know, the collection's only three years old. Mm -hmm. At the time when I was starting, there was nothing older than 2010, mm -hmm. you know, so the whole, everything is really recent. But those things made even just five or six years ago are already starting to feel dated to me, both in the way the publication is feeling, sort of it's starting to feel um, handled, but, but also the material itself. You know, the way our devices and our um, operating systems are updating constantly, we have this kind of keen awareness of what's current that's mm -hmm. getting, that's accelerating, it's mm -hmm. changing, it's getting much faster. So to, to show you um, what Twitter looked like in 2010 or um, mm. what a web page might have looked like and how we chose to represent it, uh, y you would be surprised how, how quickly we can start dating these mm. things. So anyway, is it a kind of a nostalgia? No, I don't think it's that. I think it's more like, um, it's more about trying to understand mm -hmm. culture, you know? This is what artists are doing right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. And also the publications of um, the printed web have a... Um, is internet very much for you about obsession, about compulsion, visual compulsion? Because a lot of uh, the works that you published are mm. very uh, obsessive mm -hmm. and, and are about uh, image uh, consumption, like the, the mm -hmm. last one you published uh, with uh, porn, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. um, is that for you what internet is about? I think it can be, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a really nice point to make that there is a kind of, there's a way that we're experiencing the internet that sometimes feels addictive or mm -hmm. compulsive. I mean, I, I don't think I'm alone in mm -hmm. saying yeah, that. Yeah, of <laughs> this is a sort of a common um, feeling that's, that's talked about, that's experienced. So this kind of um, feeling of addiction, like I need this and mm -hmm. I need more of it and I can't stop, um, I think is, is leading people, especially artists, to collect, mm -hmm. you know, to sort of accumulate, to create these kinds of mass, these um, accumulations of, of material. Mm -hmm. So a while back I wrote about um, grabbers, scrapers, hunters, mm -hmm. performers, people who were sort of just grabbing this stuff, artists who mm -hmm. were, and it's not just artists, people are doing this when they have their YouTube channels or their Tumblr collections or Pinterest. So I think this is significant, you know, it, documenting this aspect of culture right now, like sort of taking a slice through it and saying, here's, here's how we're archiving, not just culture and everything around us, but what we're producing. You know, our own selves, um, our own presence on social media, our mm -hmm. identities. Um, so the very last issue I did was uh, co-published with ICP, mm -hmm. International Center of Photography, with Charlotte Cotton. And the name of that show was Public Private Secret. And it was specifically about um, artists who are somehow working with this idea of personal identity in relationship to the network. And a lot of that work was... Yeah, I would characterize it as compulsive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and the print the printed web is also very uh, visual. It's a lot mm -hmm. about the the image, and th there are a lot of other things on, yeah. on, 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 online. And um, there's a whole language there um, mm -hmm, in text. terms of design. Uh, you told me um, that the, yeah, the, the browsers and, mm -hmm. and the websites that design are, are present. Mm -hmm. um, is there, are there other aspects of internet that you yeah. haven't shown yet and that are important to you? Yes, I think um, the next issue is gonna be devoted to bots mm -hmm. and this idea of automation. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that is text-based when mm -hmm. you look at Twitter bots, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just one part. There is poetry and the idea of digital literature and um, uh, which is going through a kind of explosion right now. And um, all the other aspects of design and language mm -hmm. that you're talking about. The, the very last issue, the one that I had up on the wall at the book fair, was completely visual. I didn't have any mm -hmm. text-based works there, but I have in the past. The very first issue had, had a chat room. So, um, yeah, there's another thing too, which is the web as a kind of vernacular. You know, mm -hmm. which is um, 
not necessarily how artists are looking at it, but just how we are communicating and the language and the sort of codes and signs and symbols that we're using to communicate on the web. I haven't really been doing that. I haven't been collecting that stuff. Other people do. Other people study that in a significant way, like Ole Alina uh, and others. So um, that's a whole part of the whole territory that I, um, I've looked at this more. I've looked at printed web as more of a curatorial project. Yeah, and and to show the web from the point of view of artists, artists, artistic also, production. Uh, yeah, from because of of course everyone has a, an experience of internet, but sure you're, you're trying to show their obsessions and the way they transform it in, into art. Yeah, yeah, and how artistic practice, how how production, artistic production has has changed in the last couple of years or even sort of moment to moment. Mm -hmm. the, there's one question that I want to ask you and I don't know if it's stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Kenneth Goldsmith uh, did a project called Printing the Internet, yeah. which was trying to be uh, inclusive of all of the internet and trying to print the, the whole internet. How is what you do uh, different from yeah. that? Yeah, that's a good question because sometimes it's confused mm -hmm. and they, I'm, I'm frequently approached, oh, is this the Kenneth Goldsmith project? Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, it, that was a project, yes, that tried to be inclusive and in that it was an open call mm -hmm. for a gallery in Mexico City. Um, and that's interesting. I sent something, uh, he asked any, everyone to print out the internet and send it to the gallery and I think he received like 20,000 um, submissions and he just filled the gallery. It was like this mountain of paper, mm -hmm. which I think was an important and significant moment. I was starting the collection just at that moment and mm -hmm. we were talking to each other. So we were kind of feeding each other these ideas. Um, I do think of my project as being very, very different. His was talked about as being democratic or inclusive. Mm -hmm. In the end, I'm, I really question yeah, how yeah. much it was. Mm -hmm. it, the, the photographs showed him. Yeah, nothing was visible. Uh, nothing was visible. There was no way to inspect these materials mm -hmm. um, or, or study them or mm -hmm. analyze them. And it was really about the image of the artist, the single artist, mm -hmm. not the 20,000 yes. mm -hmm. resting on this big pile of paper. And like most of a goldsmith's work, you don't need to go to Mexico to, to see the it was all about the, the idea, uh, the yeah. image and also the idea of, you know, we're going to try to print yeah. the whole internet. Of course, it's stupid and, and useless and impossible, but we're going to try anyway. And I think that's significant. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that he did that and the image of him uh, laying on this pile of paper and the way it circulated and all of the discourse, there was so much discourse, mm -hmm. you know, conversations generated around this project, super important. My project is, is, is different in that I am uh, trying actually to be inclusive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in a, in a curatorial way. Mm -hmm. My curatorial yeah. approach is let's bring uh, these kinds of artists, these people, let's invite them to participate and then let's publish this and recirculate that material, mm -hmm. circulate that mm -hmm. material and put it back out. Yeah, to try to find one that represents each aspect and yeah. you don't need to have all of it, just uh, good examples of uh, each. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, Goldsmith did a project about um, uh, Aaron Schwartz and, mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, G Star uh, yeah, Torrent I know that, project, uh, that is yeah. circulating and mm. uh, how how do you um, feel about uh, how do you does your project relate to that mm. kind of uh, internet culture because that there's a there's a whole thing that we can I think uh, call today internet culture mm. and that have people who have uh, ideals and and who are really working like uh, Aaron Schwartz did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how does your project uh, relate to that? Yeah, super important. I love that project because that enabled me to understand that um, that printing can be a political act. Mm -hmm. Okay, that if something like JSTOR and those materials and Aaron Schwartz activities, uh, if if those were closed off territories where access is not permitted mm -hmm. and um and somehow and look at wikileaks and other kinds of and edward snowden where um where there are archives of material that are being that are changing the nature of the material mm -hmm. when they're republished mm -hmm. when they are published so something is going from private to public something mm -hmm. is going from 
uh, hidden to visible from um, from in the archive to print it out and mm -hmm. circulating. And so that sort of uh, change in the state or, or it's it, it, um, there's this potential when that happens for it to take on a kind of political charge mm -hmm. uh, in, in a significant way. And so I think, yeah, I mean, how is my work uh, relating to that? I don't know. It's trying more to comment on that or to use those same techniques in order to look at it at the scale of one artist's practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, when, and that's one of the reasons why I'm interested in web to print. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by the way, there's a great article on that, uh, essay on mm -hmm. that by Orit Gat on mm -hmm. Rhizome, specifically okay. about the cool. JSTOR project. Okay, cool. And, uh, and does your, pro uh, uh, project also relates uh, somehow to um, uh, that internet culture, um, more geeky side, uh, <laughs> like the uh, meme uh, or, or this kind of, of uh, the, the culture that you might find on on, uh, on Reddit or, yeah. or, or in, uh, what's that, what that be for? 4chan. For, in, on yeah. 4chan also? Yeah, yeah it can. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, printed web number three was an open call. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I didn't know who would respond, but 150 people did. So I had all these JPEGs and PDFs from people, and this was different. The other issues have been highly curated. I asked nine or 10 artists. I know mm -hmm. pretty much the kind of work I'm gonna get. This was a kind of free-for-all, and uh, most people who replied were some kind of net artists, but also lots of other um, people maybe who don't identify as artists. This was fantastic because I had all of this material. I decided to not curate it. Mm -hmm. I decided to include all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of that material is there. There's stuff pulled right from Reddit. There are just screen grabs and um, text messaging threads mm -hmm. and emails. And there we get a little bit closer to the vernacular mm -hmm. and like the texture of mm -hmm. network culture. And those are the zines I think you have mm -hmm. that set. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that will be your on uh, on artists, uh, for this. Yes, good. good. <laughs> and um, and um, maybe one or two questions more. And mm -hmm. there, there's one that thing that always struck me about the publication that you do is that you as a designer is very present. Mm. But maybe when you're talking, that's also because. Um, when people pull uh, images out of uh, internet, they they all somehow look the same, and they all look uh, anonymous somehow, mm -hmm. because um, like everyone is anonymous uh, mm -hmm. on internet. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you you talked about a uh, publishing practice? Mm -hmm. um, is that something that uh, worries you, or or that you think is a good thing that this uh, individuality of the contributors mm -hmm. is is um, uh, distanced? Uh, by the fact that all the contributions are the same kind of material mm -hmm. and, and they all somehow look the same because they have the same problems? Well, it's interesting to hear you put it that way because I tend to think of it almost in the opposite way, yeah. <laughs> which is, and, and maybe because you're talking about the third issue, which was this sort of massive accumulation, 150 mm -hmm. people. So there was a kind of texture that was created mm -hmm. and it was less about the individual. Mm -hmm. So you're right. With all the other publications that I'm doing, like for instance, the last one, number four, mm -hmm. is um, just nine artists in a big newsprint um, edition. And each artist got one sheet in the mm -hmm. front and the back. And the images are very big and bold and graphic. Um, I tend to think it's more the opposite, or that's more what I'm interested in, because, because of the condition that you're talking about of anonymity, I'm interested in elevating the work of the artist mm -hmm. who works with the network. Like a magnifying glass. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other thing that happens when these things are published specifically in print and there's a name attached to it mm -hmm. and it's uh, an exhibition in print. So mm -hmm. there's a list of artists, there's mm -hmm. a little explanation. Mm -hmm. That kind of formal framing, that's a kind of framing, that I, that's what I feel my role mm -hmm. is as the, as the yes. curator, is oh, the framing. framing the material and mm -hmm. saying, look, here's a presentation. This is, these are artworks. This is a group show this actually isn't all the same mm -hmm. um and let's slow down for a second and and mm -hmm. take a look at this work as um as being significant mm -hmm. so the last question yeah so this book uh, 
just to go back uh, closer to what uh, interests me in this project, which are zines and why artists make zines. Yeah. And um, so why, why did you call those booklets uh, zines? You could mm -hmm. have called them a, a, a number of uh, other ways. Is there a specific reason you call them zines? Yeah, the ones you're talking about, Printed Web number three, I call them zines because there's something about that word that interests me. Um, zine as you know, has this really charged political, punk, democratic kind of mm -hmm. charge that mm -hmm. um, goes back decades. Uh, I'm really interested in how that's changing. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there are people who still make scenes where they're collaging or they're writing, they're photocopying and folding. Um, and, and that's important. These are different, but I believe what they, what makes them different from magazines, for instance, is that there's something almost disposable, uh, very quick, very efficient, mm -hmm. very cheap, mm -hmm. almost free, but not mm -hmm. quite, um, that is enabling artists to get this material right into the hands of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in the zine tent mm -hmm. at the New York Art Book Fair uh, of the last two years, and that's also significant for me. I don't really want to be inside with the galleries and the larger publishers, I believe that the spirit of this project mm -hmm. is coming from that same place mm -hmm. of let's get this work out there quickly into mm -hmm. the hands directly mm -hmm. of... Um, Maybe to keep that proximity that you can have with people yeah. on the internet? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That proximity, and that's what I love about the fairs, mm -hmm. is that there's a sense of community, proximity, conversation mm -hmm. that then is fueled by the networks, the social media. Perfect. Thank you so Good. much. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>